Hello, Sky Taylor, and welcome to another Tips and Tricks. You know, as an artist, we have to have an advantage. It, it, you're in a crowded field. Everybody is in the art. So you have to do something that will make you stand out a little bit more than your competition. And one of the most important things and overlooked things is your business card. A lot of artists cheap out and print them off on their own computer. Now they do a great job, but sometimes the quality that you print out is not as good as what you can have it professionally done. I would never cheap out on this. The problem with printing your own business cards is your quality of paper. Chances are your paper that you print on is not going to be as good as what the professionals will give you. Now, I had business cards printed up from a company called Vistaprint, V-I-S-T-A-P-R-I-N-T dot com. No, I am not an affiliate of them. I have nothing to do with them whatsoever. Love their product. What I did was the very first thing, you go online and they have different templates that you can fill out. Really easy. You can, they have, uh, it's all sorts of templates for your business card. First thing you want to do, I highly suggest, is pick a glossy stock. Looks nice when it's really glossy. One of the most important things you can put on your business card is your art. Get them right from the beginning. Get them hooked. Get your best piece, one of your better pieces, and put a picture of your painting right on the card. What else do you need on the card? Well, you're going to need your name, maybe what kind of art you do. If you're an abstract artist, put down abstract art. I put fine art down because fine art allows me to be flexible. It could be abstracts. It could be, it doesn't make a difference. <clears throat> Next, I put down original abstracts, 3D art, landscapes, and the most important thing, commissions. I will do commissions. If you do commissions, make sure you put that on your card. Next most important thing is the phone number. Now, you really don't want to give out your personal phone number to your personal cell phone. Reason being that is Sometimes you'll get calls that you really don't want to take. You know, they might come at a bad time. You want to keep your personal cell phone number personal. Well, how do you do that then? Especially, I'm talking about if you're working out of your home, if you have a little home studio. Sometimes it pays to make an investment in another phone. Now, cell phones can be expensive. But there's a way to get around that. Get a phone number for your business, very inexpensive, and that's called a magic jack. Did you ever hear of a magic jack? Go online. Again, not an affiliate. Magicjack.com. It's M-A-G-I-C-J-A-C-K.com. Look them up. You get a little box like this. And what you do is you can plug it directly into your internet. This goes right into your modem. They have a little jack here that goes into a portable phone. And this side plugs directly in the wall. Now you can pick up a portable phone at like Walmart for about $15 or a little rechargeable phone. Don't get the answering machine, not needed. Get the cheapest phone you can get, 15 bucks, if you're under 20 bucks, you're good. Don't spend a lot. What happens is that when people call in to this number, they can leave a message that will go directly to, a, to your computer. It'll go right into your email. So when you're scrolling through your email, it'll say you have a message. You can listen to it right in your email. This way you don't miss any phone calls. Great idea. Awesome. Now, what does a Magic Jack cost? Well, costs $35 a year. Now, when you buy the Magic Jack, you might get six months for free. Your first six months is going to be free. Maybe they'll give you a year. I don't know. It depends on what promotions they're running. But usually your first six months. And then after that, you have options. 
and at the time of this video, it's $35 a year or $100 for five years. Start out with the first year, 35 bucks. You'll get six months for free. That'll determine whether you really like it or not. I love this phone. I think it's completely awesome. Then when you go to renew your first time, you could either go with the year or the five years. That's up to you. But an incredible thing, you'll want to get one. Okay, let's get back to business cards. Now, Vistaprint is an awesome company. That's where I got these printed up. V-I-S-T-A-P-R-I-N-T. Great company. The only problem is, is, excuse me, folks. The only problem is, is that they upsell you on everything. And you have to be focused on what you want. First thing you want is a the glossy card. That's the most important thing. But you want to get as least quantity of the business cards as you possibly can get. And I'm going to tell you why. It's not going to be cost effective. They'll upsell you and say, okay, if you buy 500 cards, it's like $40 or something. Let's I'm throwing figures out here. But if you buy a thousand cards, you get them for fifty bucks. Thousand cards are a lot of cards. I would probably gamble it and go with the thousand cards, but don't, don't buy any more than a thousand cards to start. That's overkill. I'm going to tell you why. Things change. You might get the card and find out that you made a mistake on it. Now you're stuck with a thousand cards to 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 get rid of or alter. You can't put stickers on them. It looks stupid. But you have to do what you have to do, you know? And inevitably, your first printing, you're going to want to make changes. So you want to go as least as possible. Cost you a little bit more to begin with. But in the long run, you'll save money, believe it or not. So your first printing, until you are sure, 100% sure, you can live with the bigger quantity, start out small, then grow big. I made the mistake. <laughs> I'll tell you what I did. They upsell you on everything. I started out at 500 cards. It's all I was going to do. Then they gave the great deal for 1000 And as I'm going along, oh man, good deal. Look at all the money I'm going to save. Then it was 2,000 cards. So I, it was just a few dollars more. I says, oh yeah, okay, I'll, what the heck, I'll get 2,000. But along the line, they upsell you on everything too. Now you can go with the upsells, whatever you want, but I stay try to stay focused. They'll say everything from pots and pans to, I, I think that's what it was. If you want to buy that stuff, that's up to you. When I go to buy business cards, I buy business cards. And you got to determine what you really need. <clears throat> so anyways, I end up buying 2,000 business cards. I get them in. And what happened was, all of a sudden, my phone number changed. Right at the beginning, I decided I'm going with the, the Magic Jack. I had my personal phone number on there. And I decided then I was going to go with the Magic Jack. And that was when I had like 900 cards left. <laughs> no, 1,900 cards left. So I had only gotten rid of 100 cards. And I thought, oh, this wasn't going to work. So therefore, I'm stuck with 1,900 cards that need changes. Not good. But... I don't think, uh, the reason why I went to a Magic Jack and a different phone number was uh, I had to go to this party and we only had 45 minutes to be at this party. And I looked forward to it all week long because it's, I was going to see people I haven't seen in a long time. So I had to make a quick 45 minutes. I had to be elsewhere at a big art show that I had to be at. So I thought I'd sneak over to the party Make a grand entrance, have fun, talk to old friends real quick, you know, and then head out. Just as I get to the party, my cell phone rings. Because I had my cell phone on my business card. It was a good customer. I mean, a really good customer. A guy that buys big. And I answered the phone and there was nothing I could do. Right as I walk in the door, the phone rings, I answer it. I had to talk to him. So I had to step outside the party and I'm walking down the block because I don't want people to hear me. Well, unfortunately, this customer was not much of a talker. He would say five words and then there'd be 15 minutes of silence while he collected his thoughts. 
<laughs> yep, one of those. So what happened, by the time he finally got out everything he wanted to say, and we got our conversation done, I look over, and there's my wife waving. She's at the car. Party's over for us. So I had to, I, I'm still talking to the guy, and I had to go. I had to go to my art show. So I missed uh, seeing everybody. I had just barely enough time to go in and say, hey, everybody, goodbye. That was it. You know, I had to hurry out. So I missed my party. So I made the rule, you know, not my personal phone number on my business cards. The Magic Jack is the way to go. This way I can get to it and spend the time I need to spend, the quality time with my customers when I can do it, you know. So that's the importance of really getting a, uh, a Magic Jack. Just an awesome thing. Okay, you want to put down your email on your business card. Have a dedicated email just for art. Emails are free to set up. Have a dedicated one. If you have a personal email, keep that personal. Like for your friends and family, have one dedicated just for art. Give it an art name. You know, put your name in your email so it's easy to, you know, for customers to remember. Keep it simple. So that's important. Website. We'll talk about this as we go on. You could either have your own personal website or you could be affiliated with, you could be on a, um, a Etsy or Fine Art America or Artfire, whatever your, your uh, website is. You want to put that on there too. We'll talk more about that and the different websites there are on future tips and tricks. Next most important thing on a business card, besides having your First, you should put your uh, one of your best paintings or something that represents you on the front. Important. But the back is always wasted space. You'll want to put a collage of your paintings on the back. Reason being is that when you hand your business card to a potential customer, they can flip it over and they can see all your work right then and there. Kind of a teaser. Gets them to go to your website to maybe purchase art. It leaves an impression, you know, on their mind when they can see s samples of your work. Nobody ever really thinks of doing that, you know, so that's going to give you an edge. You know, you want to sell them. You want to show them what you can do. And you hardly have to say a word, this does it for you. You're going to make the use of this. Business cards are incredible because you can put them everywhere. You know, you can, if you wanted to, you go to a laundry mat. There's a bulletin board. Put them up on the laundry mat. Now, most people that do laundry mats live in apartments. Most of those people probably would never buy your painting, but you never know. You might get the bachelor that lives in the apartment that needs to decorate his walls, sees your art card, calls you up. You got business. Had that happened before. I go to a little restaurant. It's a little tavern with my wife. We go probably maybe couple times a year, it's out of state, it's over the border. And we'll go and we'll have our, I'll have a beer and a sandwich and right in, in the booth is a bulletin board and everybody pins their cards up. I had a bunch of cards, I started pinning them up all over. About maybe three, four months later we go back, all my cards are gone. So that's good. Somebody took the cards. Maybe I got business out of it, I don't know. But it's good because you're spreading your name out. Be creative. Business cards, put them everywhere. If you're talking to people on the street, hand them your card. Let everybody know that you're an artist. You have to promote yourself. Said it a million times, and probably the number's getting smaller, but remember, art is like, I said at one point it was 20% art and 80% promotion. Now it's 10% being an artist, 90% promotion because the field is crowded. You got to keep pushing. You got to keep pushing. You know, people aren't going to know who you are unless you tell them. Business card tells them. So make sure you give it out to everybody you know. Hand some out to friends. You know, it's just like my, my painter. I had a painter that comes in and paints my house. He does the walls. I handed him a stack of my business cards. 
he handed me a stack of his. I recommend his business, he recommends mine. What better way than a painter or a home decorator? What happens is that they go into all different homes. They do. And if they see a wall and they're painting up, they can hand them your business card. You see? Good promotion. Because those people are decorating. Maybe they want something that you're doing. He can highly recommend you. You know, painters and home interior decorators. You never know. Make friends with these people. You know, show them your line. They can hand out your cards. They can get you business. I've gotten a lot of business that way. That's one way to promote your business. And we'll get more into promoting business on down the road. But that's just an idea with the business cards. You know, you know, be creative with them. Be creative. You got a thousand cards, get rid of a thousand cards. Hand them out to everybody, pin them everywhere. Give them to friends, give them to relatives, anybody. Just keep your your name out there. And we'll talk about a lot about promotion and different ways on how you can promote your business. But your most important ticket is your business card. Don't cheap out. Forget about printing them on your computer unless you can print beautiful glossy stock. You want to make it beautiful. Make it the best you can. It's worth a few bucks you're going to pay. Really worth it. Don't cheap out on that. Very, very important. Well, I'm going to sit and have my coffee, and I really appreciate you taking the time to sit and talk to me. Well, actually, I talked to you <laughs> while I had my coffee about business cards and the importance of them. So go get some printed up, and it's the best investment you're going to make, one of the most important investments. Do that. Do that today. And we'll be talking to you really, really soon with another tips and tricks. Now, my plan is to do tips and tricks on Wednesdays and Sundays. I may drop back to just Wednesdays for a while. I don't know. Sometimes I'll do them on Sundays. Maybe sometimes I won't. Or I'll just do them on Sundays and not Wednesdays. Not sure yet what I'm going to do. But uh, we've got a lot of information coming up. So you'll want to stay tuned. And uh, I'll keep you posted on exactly what I'm going to do. But thanks for watching this Tips and Tricks. And I'm going to enjoy my coffee. Thank you. Blessings. Talk to you real soon. Bye.